Welcome back, folks. I hope you're having a great week. I have some really exciting news this week. I've partnered with Trains.com, that's Trains with a Z, on a special promotion. So from now until the end of August, use the code right here, I'll also link it in the description, to get $10 off your next purchase. I've actually been really excited because I've been buying a lot of my MPC era trains from Trains.com, which, to get right into it, is the train we're gonna look at tonight, which is the MPC Lionel Daylight. I cannot wait to start this video. I am so excited to get this engine, so let's get it going. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Lionel released this engine in 1983, and the model number is 8307. So if you're looking for it, look it up under that part number. It features the sounds of steam, an electronic whistle, and it's just a very fascinating engine. It's modeled after the 4449, loosely. Again, it's MPC, so we are not looking at scale proportions. But tonight, we're gonna do something where I'm gonna run it next to one of the scale GSs that I have in my fleet. Today, the Daylight still remains one of the most sought after engines of the MPC era even more so than the Blue Comet or the 611. We've been doing a lot of MPC, and we're going to do a lot more MPC. But now, let's get this engine on the track. And of course, when we run this engine, I have to have the passenger car set to go with it. So we're going to be running this set of aluminum passenger cars that match this particular engine. I can't wait to get this on the track. MPC era engines are known for being such colorful pieces. And I think so many collectors are drawn to the Daylight specifically for its vibrant color scheme. It really stands out when you compare it to other engines in the fleet. The bright orange and the reds. And if you look at the engine up close, Lionel, even for being an MPC era model, did a really great job on this engine. These engines were made with post-war tooling, and they took a lot of shortcuts when they produced these. A lot of plastic, a lot of things that we don't see today on a lot of the scale models. But like I've always said, MPC is an era to be celebrated unto itself. As we've said before, whenever you get a new engine, you always want to check things over. With MPC, there's a finer detail that I really haven't discussed too much. You've probably seen it in the forums, you've probably seen it on social media, but it has to do with these tenders that have a sound of steam circuit board. Inside this tender, there is a circuit board that's mounted horizontally, and it sits on a foam pad. That foam pad was installed in the 70s or the 80s, and over time can deteriorate. And a lot of folks have had issues where the deterioration of that pad has caused the circuit board to fall and make contact with the metal frame of this tender, and poof, then you don't have sounds of steam anymore. For some people, that's a blessing, and for some people, that's a curse. I think that the nostalgic value of these engines is that sound of steam. So I try to make sure that it's one of the things I check when I first get one of these engines. So I did take the tender apart. The foam board was actually in perfect condition, but I did apply some double-sided tape just to pad the circuit board and protect it a little bit more. I always try to hold these horizontally. I don't flip them over. I don't want to upset the board because it literally is just laying inside. And as always, we want to make sure that we're greasing all of our equipment so that it runs well. So we're going to go ahead and hit the key points under the engine, giving everything a little bit of a drink here. Because as we always say, clean trains and greased trains are happy trains. Our MPC passenger lineup tonight consists of a baggage car, two coaches, a dome car, and an observation car. It's a good bit of weight for this engine to pull, but I'm confident we'll have no problems zipping around the track tonight. I'm so excited to run these daylight engines together, but my GS2 was feeling a little left out. So rather than chasing three different engines around the layout, I'm gonna double head my GS5 and my GS2 together. That way, it's a little bit more exciting, and we'll see if we can get some good steam going in this room tonight. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about the Vision Line engines that you're gonna see tonight, because really tonight is all about the MPC Daylight. But I wanted to run them together to compare so we can look at the evolution of the hobby over the years. The coolest feature about these two engines, the Vision Line engines that is, is the cylinder steam. And I'm really gonna stoke them up during this video. So 
we'll see how smoky we can make the room. All right, folks, it's my favorite part, getting the engines running. So let's start by getting the MPC engine fired up. The mighty sounds of steam. Let's get that beautiful 1983 whistle. Super prototypical. All right. And now I have my two Vision GSs programmed as a train. Let's fire this up. Yard off says B4458. Make a pull to the pit to tap her off. Over. Okay, let's get to work. SP4458. Out. All right. Listen to those sing. What a beautiful, beautiful whistle. Enjoy. Let's get them running.
That was a ton of smoke tonight. I had to let the fans run for a good 15 minutes just to get the haze out of this room so I could wrap up this video. As always, a huge thank you to all of my subscribers, and welcome if you're new. MPC is such a cool era, and I love to compare engines of old with the modern engines because there's something nostalgic, but it's also great to watch the evolution of the hobby. So many possibilities, so many ways to enjoy the hobby. Whether you're looking at MPC, pre-war, post-war, modern, 90s, there's so much you can do with it. And I hope that you all are able to celebrate it and build in your own way. My name is Chris, and this is RBP Trains. Have a great weekend.